Hi everyone, right now we will continue from the previous video, which is we will calculate the power for throwable. Okay, let's do this. Last time we create this, let's play and see what we've done here. So we make a click, drag and release mouse and we get the coordinate that we can calculate to adjust the power to throw the ball. Now let's open the script of the ball again. And here we can see the start position and end position. It's using the same method. So we can refactor it first. Let's create private factor2 and get mouse position. And we can just return this slide. And use this. Now our job is to calculate the difference between endpoint and start point, which is very easy. So we can create factor two power equals end position minus start position. That's it. And we can apply the force using this value. So give force to the rigid body 2D for the ball. We can just type get component rigid body 2D add force and give power and use force mode. Force mode 2D and choose force. It's useful for throwing the ball. Okay, let's take a look at the result first. And we can remove this box. We already done checking the rotation of the ball. Okay, let's click, drag, and release. Oh, it doesn't do anything. And why is that? Actually, it's done something, see? But it's in the wrong direction we want, because if we drag and release, we want it to move in the opposite direction, right? Okay, let's fix that first. We can just use the opposite of this. It's a start position, mean end position. It's like that, and as you can see before, our power is too low, so we need to drag it so far to get the result. So, give power, let's say I will multiply it by 10, so we can see the result. Play. And let's see. Apparently, it's still too low in power. See, I had dragging so far away. Release and just give that result. Again, uh, we can just multiply it by 100. Now it's starting to show the result. Oh, nice. And we can throw the ball. Oh, okay. Good. Now we can move the power as variable that we can input in the editor. If it public float power. Uh, maybe we can just do that another name like force force. So I think we can just use force here. Now if we see in the editor, we can see the force right here. And let's check it out. This is 100. And let's try 200. We can just this letter, I just want to show you. Okay, nice. Okay, I like it. 
Now we can stop the ball. If you remember, we are using rigid body 2D. We can disable the simulation by using kinematic. So uh, right now, if we start the ball affects by gravity right away. But we don't want that in the game, right? We want it to floating first. After we set our power, then it can't affect it by the gravity. Okay, let's set it as kinematic first using get component and rigid body 2D is kinematic equals true. Again, we will do it step by step. So we need to see if it's changed. Play. Okay, good. Now it's not moving. And if we give the power, it do nothing, right? Because it's kinematic right now. So what we will do is you can guess it right away. When we release the mouse position, we need to set the kinematic as false. Use get component rigid body 2D is kinematic false. Then start apply the force. Okay, let's see. Play. Okay, let's try this. Click, drag, and release. Oh, nice. This is what we want. And we need to reset the behavior in some condition, right? I, I mean, we will getting to the start point again. But before that, we will refactor it because I see so many duplication here, like rigid body. So we can store it using private rigid body 2D and just say, it uh, and just give it a name rigid body 2d and use void awake so in the life cycle awake is before the start actually it's much before the start let's say it's like a constructor priority it's the first method that running in the class so rigid body 2d we need to establish this using get component rigid body 2d well oh apparently i can't use this name okay uh let's just say it physics then because it's the part of the physics of the ball after that we can change all the rigid body 2d as physics Okay, I'm pretty sure that's working well, but still, let's just check it. Play and, okay, we can throw the ball. Okay, nice. Stop it. Now we can create it like a game. Actually, we can do this later, but I want to show you how to reset the position and what issue that we will get. So we will make a condition. Okay, okay. First, in the real game, the condition is when the ball is scored or not scored, uh, it will random the ball position, right? Into some position. And we can shoot again or game over. So in this example, we will use a condition to make the ball reset its position. And the condition is when the ball touching the ground, it will reset its position. Okay, let's do this. To reset the position, we need to store the start position of the ball. So um, we can create variable private factor two initial position. So we can differentiate between start and initial, um, or maybe it's better using um, default ball position. I think it's better. And set it right here. 
default ball position equals to we can use the physics here and position okay basically we can use this because the rigid body also store the position if not using physics the position which which is the rigid body 2d we can use trans transform dot position it also works because we are on the mono behavior and this is our ball it's treating us just like a game object right here so we can just use this like game object dot transform dot position we can use it right away okay and when it collides with the ground we will reset its position actually in this time it doesn't matter what we collide with because we can just collide with one object which is the ground so we can just detect the collision and reset the position we can use the method point on collision enter 2d because we are using 2d and use parameter collision 2d collision right now we will not use this because we don't care what we collide with so we can just reset its position remember always always make it work first and then we can refactor it we not only need to reset its position but we also need to set its kinematic too so it will freeze in the air let's try this okay start and let's force the ball okay it doesn't do anything let's see what's wrong with this okay because i'm using lower case on o let's try again throw the ball see it gets the wrong behavior basically because it's kinematic and the force still applied so it will running wild and to clear the force using physics uh, physics dot velocity equals factor two dot zero so we need to reset the velo the current velocity and because we don't have the rotation i can't tell you this but uh okay let's try this first let's see oh i just realized something so uh i need to set the transform dot position as default ball position but i do it wrong right here and just enforce it okay wait throw the ball and it's reset its position but the rotation still applied so we need to disable the rotation too basically we already set the velocity as zero but not the rotation velocity so to make it also zero using physics dot angular velocity equals to zero okay let's try this again throw the ball and it's reset its position and the rotation already gone okay nice okay this is it for now we can already set the pro power we already can reset its position and next step is we can draw the trajectory of the ball so we can aim to score the ball if we try right now it's hard for us to see how much power we have to score the ball right so we will create the trajectory after this before that uh let's refactor something if we can refactor it mm, i don't think so for now we will refactor it at the right time and 
And right now, I don't think I can do anything. Okay, see you guys in the next video. We will give trajectory to the ball. Thanks for watching.